In this video I'm going to show you how to inspect a uh, motorcycle brake disc for wear and I'm going to be doing it on a front brake disc on a 2009 Kawasaki KLR650. First thing we want to do is a visual inspection of the brake disc and in order to do that you need to elevate the bike so you can rotate the wheel. Um, you want to do an overall inspection just look for anything that looks unusual, uh, look for any broken pieces. Um, after, you, after that you want to focus on the area of the brake disc uh, where the pad makes contact with the disc brake um, or with the disc. It's about right here close to the outer edge to about right here. Uh, you want to look for any scoring marks. Um, it, it, it should be relatively smooth. It's not going to be baby skin smooth but there shouldn't be any deep gouges uh, which can happen if, if you let your um, brake pads wear down to the uh, metal backing plate. The metal backing plate can make contact with the disc with the brake disc and and cause deep deep gouging or scoring uh, you want to rotate the wheel inspect the entire uh, disc surface where the pads make contact make sure there's no deep scoring marks um, if you find them um, you need to replace your disc uh, your disc should look this is normal wear so your, your disc should look something like this and don't forget to um, inspect both sides and also when you make sure there's no grease or oil on your fingers when you you know you rub your fingers across the brake disc because um, that can affect uh, the ability of your brakes to uh, stop the wheel. Um, then you want to take your take your uh, your wheel, straighten it up, look down the uh, disc like this. You want to look for any lateral movement, which would be this way. Um, that's called brake disc runout. There's, there's usually always some brake disc run out and we can, we'll, later in the video we'll, we'll measure that with a dial indicator but visually you shouldn't see any run out. Uh, you want to rotate your wheel and look down your brake disc like this and look for any lateral movement. You shouldn't see any. These are the tools I'll be using to measure the uh, brake disc. Um, to measure the thickness of the brake disc I'm going to be using a one inch micrometer and to measure the brake disc run out I'm going to be using a dial gauge which is attached to a flex clamp which is attached or a flex stand which is attached to a clamp here um, which is just a pair of vice grips. Um, I'm not really going to talk about how to use or read these these uh, tools. I'm going to talk a little bit about the dial indicator um, but to explain how to use a micrometer it, it's just going to take too much time so um, if anyone's interested they can leave me a comment or send me a message through YouTube and I can make a, a video at a later date. To measure the thickness of the brake disc, uh, you want to you want to measure it at several spots, and you want you want to take your measurement within the area where your brake pads make contact with the brake disc. Um, it's somewhere close to the outer edge here to about right here, so within this area, um, the minimum thickness shouldn't be less than 180 thousandths. You want to take your micrometer, um, place it over the disc like this, uh, tighten it down. Uh, don't over tighten it um, and take a reading. Uh, this one reads 192 thousandths, so I'm, I'm 12 thousandths over uh, the minimum thickness of 180 thousandths. And then rotate your wheel, pick another spot, and tighten down your, your micrometer. And reads the same thing, 192 thousandths. And uh, pick another spot on your brake disc and take another reading. And same thing, 192 thousandths. So um, this brake break, uh, thickness is within specs. It's not less than 180 thousandths. Now I'm going to uh, measure uh, brake disc runout. Um, I've got my tool set up here. I've got the clamp on the um, axle nut here. I've got the flex shaft tightened down, and I have the dial indicator set up here where it's just touching the uh, touching the brake disc right here. Um, you can check that it's touching the brake disc by pulling out this part of the dial indicator and letting it go and you can you can hear and see that it's it's making contact with the brake disc. Um, under ideal conditions you would want this to be set up uh, within a half an inch of the um, outside perimeter of the brake disc but because of the design of the disc and the holes here um, the closest point near the perimeter um, or outer diameter would be right where I've got it so this is where I'll be taking my uh, run out measurement. Now that I've got my runout tool positioned correctly, I need to set up my uh, dial gauge. Um, before I do that, I want to talk about the uh, marks on this dial face. Um, 
Each mark is one thousandths of an inch, so if this needle here moved from, say, the zero mark to uh, ten, that means it moved, um, this plunger here moved ten thousandths of an inch. The uh, maximum allowable runout for this uh, disc on the, on the 2009 KLR650 is uh, 12 thousandths of an inch and what that means is uh, the lowest point on this uh, disc and uh, the highest point, uh, the difference should not be greater than 12 thousandths of an inch. To uh, set up the dial indicator, you want to take your, uh, the dial face and rotate it until the zero is lined up with the uh, needle on the, uh, on the gauge. Now we're ready to um, measure the run out of the disc. Uh, you want to gently uh, rotate, the, rotate the wheel and watch the needle on the uh, dial indicator. It will sway back and forth and um, the difference between the uh, farthest points on the uh, on the dial uh, is is the amount of run out. Um, it shouldn't be greater than twelve thousandths of an inch for this particular bike. And you can see it's it's probably in between one and two thousandths of an inch. Um, to make to make it easier to to get a reading, you can find your low point, which would be uh, let's see, it's about right right there. Once you find your low point, you can take your dial face, rotate it until the zero is lined up with the needle and then uh, rotate your disc again and there's and, and then take your reading and find the highest point and the highest point is about right there let's see About, it's in between one thousandths and two thousandths of an inch, so I'm well within specs of uh, the limit of twelve thousandths of an inch. Um, if, the, if the needle moves from the zero, which is our low point, to uh, twelve or past the twelve, then I would have exceeded um, twelve thousandths of an inch. And in that case, I'm, I'm, I've either got a bad uh, brake disc, or what else? Well, another thing that can cause that are your wheel bearings. So um, before you automatically assume that it's a brake disc, uh, you should check your check your wheel bearings for wear. Just to uh, recap, uh, the first thing you need to do when you, you check a brake disc is uh, check for any do a visual inspection, check for excessive scoring, and check for any lateral movement. Um, also, one thing I forgot to mention: uh, also check for excessive normal wear. Uh, when you have excessive wear on a brake pad or brake disc, um, it means that there will be edges here where the edge of the brake pad makes contact with the um, brake disc. So you would have an edge right here and a deep edge right here. Um, if you find that, then you need to move forward and uh, actually measure it with a micrometer. Um, if you find excessive scoring, uh, be sure and uh, also find the source of that scoring. Usually it's a brake pad that's worn down and the, the metal backing plate of the pad is making contact with the brake disc or you might have rivets in your brake pad that uh, is making contact with the uh, brake disc. So um, in that case you would have more to do than just um, replacing the brake disc. Um, also if you, um, if you find excessive uh, run out, uh, be sure and check the, to make sure that the wheel bearings are, um, are good. Um, bad wheel bearings can also cause excessive runout, so don't automatically assume that um, it's your brake disc. Uh, hope you found this video helpful, and uh, thank you for watching.